Jonathan Johnson here for a House of Champions special, and I'm delighted to say that ahead of the World Cup final between Argentina and France, I'm joined by Mikael Silvestre, a former international with Le Bleu. Mikael, thanks for joining me. How are you doing? I'm very good, thanks. thanks. Thanks for having me. No, you're welcome. As you can hear in the background, my dog is absolutely delighted and uh, keyed up for this World Cup final. So let's get into it. First of all, Mikael, are you surprised to see Le Bleu back in the final four years on from uh, from Russia? Because not that many people were expecting them to really go so deep in terms of potentially defending their title. But here they are. Well, as a, as an insider, I was... Um... Confident we would we would do well in the in the competition, but as soon as we had those setbacks with Kante, Pogba, Benzema, Hernandez, uh, and Kunku, um, yeah, we were we were a bit uh, low, I must say, and not as as confident going into the competition. But uh, we here we are, seven games in, and um, this is the final, the big one. Uh, and how much of France's success in this in this deep run do you think owes to Didier Deschamps and the fact that he seems to be a specialist in in this kind of setting, this kind of environment? You know, he really specializes in getting a group of players together in a tournament, uh, you know, fostering that kind of winning mentality, that uh, uh, us against the world um sort of uh, attitude uh, between him and the players and and leading them as far as he can. Yeah, I think he's benefiting from the entire French ecosystem, French football ecosystem. You know, the quality of the players is very impressive. Playing for the uh, in the top leagues and uh, in the top clubs, featuring in the highest competition, winning titles. So for Didier, it's all about getting everybody together uh, to embrace that culture. Um, he got rid of the players who wouldn't fit his philosophy and. Uh, you know, it's for him. It's the group first and individual second, uh, and then he's he's got the formula in terms of, you know, getting possession, uh, being difficult to to play against and hard to to beat. And we've got some weapon going forward. I mean, those those strikers uh, could could score against anybody. So um, it's a good balance, and uh, I think where he's been really good is. Uh, to be able to find that balance in such a short period and to replace those key elements with Chouameni, Rabio, the brother, Hernandez, you know, Giroud back in frame and and still um, also Upamecano for, or Konate for Kimpembe. And this in this short period of time, uh, one week before the tournament and then game after game, we can see there is a, a real group a uh, real spirit uh, ready to fight and and to go all the way yeah absolutely and i'm glad that you touched on the development um of talent within france because that i f- i feel is one of the things that uh you know this recent french success both in 2018 and now and you know the fact that france has also been to four of the the last seven um finals you know, does this make France now the undisputed kings uh, of talent development? Because historically, we've talked a lot about Brazil, uh, you know, and, and the amount of players that it exports as a country. But France, certainly in recent years and in terms of the top five leagues in Europe, has become more than just a rival to Brazil now. Yeah, I think uh, way before the Les Bleus in 98, which was the first uh, group of, of world champion, there was a, there was a proper uh, agenda. Uh, strategic plan uh, to produce players all over France, not only at Clairefontaine but everywhere. And this plan has been growing and ex- expanding. So now we're just seeing the fruit, the fruitation um, of this uh, wonderful plan because um, is is touching every part of France, uh, wherever you come from. It could be uh, Paris area, the suburbs, or or outside, you know, the, the region of, of France, uh, you have a chance, you can go through a, a very good pathway that leads to a youth national team and you, you end up with top top players in the national team. So it's uh, just a natural consequences of, of this program that has been set up by the, the French Federation over, over the past decades. And now um, here we are, you know, we are, 
really dominating the the world. Uh, I can say without uh, with all humility, uh, the biggest uh, French con the biggest foreign contingent in the Premier League, which is the strongest league in my eyes, in terms of uh, level and and obviously finance. Uh, uh, it, the players are coming from France, so it's a it's a testament to to what uh, France is producing. And you know, during your time uh, in your career, you came through the ranks at Rennes, uh, but you've also seen what it's like how the the, the inside of the club works uh, in terms of a directorial role as well. Um, how have you seen things develop uh, in the country in terms of producing talent since you were a player, and then once uh, you were uh, you know working on the inside with the with the club after your playing career? I think uh, what has changed that. Uh... The lower lower clubs uh, in the lowest division have more um, uh, infrastructure and and coaches uh, being able to uh, to to mature players to coach players. Um, so it's I think for me it's the expansion that has been the size of the expansion and the the speed uh, has been impressive. That's why. There is so many players that could pretend to be in a, in a French team. The the one that are on the verge of being selected could feature in many many other national teams, you know. And not only for the French national team, we have the B nationals, you know, uh, players who are playing for Algeria. I mean, all the North African countries, the African countries, the West African countries. They they come from 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 France. Uh, system as well so um, a lot of countries are benefiting from uh, from the french system yeah absolutely i was uh, writing an article on it the other day mentioning some of the other graduates from claire fontaine who have also played for other national teams guerrero for portugal for example mejbri for uh for tunisia but mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned the premier league uh, obviously you spent uh, the best part of a decade at Manchester United. So moving slightly away from the World Cup for a minute, uh, you know, what do you make of the the developments at Old Trafford uh, in recent months? Uh, you know, between Eric Ten Hag coming in, um, sort of leading his uh, his revolution, and then obviously you had the the controversy with Cristiano Ronaldo, that ill timed interview with uh, with Piers Morgan, and then him parting company with uh, with the club. You played uh, alongside him uh, at a time uh, at United. You, were you surprised um, at the way that Ronaldo timed that interview before the World Cup? Well, I don't know about the, the timing, but uh, whenever this interview was going to be air, uh, there was only one outcome, uh, which was a, a separation. And that was the, the best thing that could happen. So the only thing really that could happen after that so yeah it's uh it was i think a pity because when cristiano signed back at manchester united he wanted to to give uh, a lot uh to share uh, to obviously his score goals and perform and you know it wasn't an an easy uh, decision for him to to go back to manchester and given the fact that the team was clearly not competing for the title and he's a uh, he's a title uh, uh, serial killer. Um, so he was ready to to give, and I think he was disappointed that um, it wasn't seen as, you know, I'm I'm Cristiano Ronaldo. I'm almost like bigger than Manchester United right now. I don't need Manchester United right now. So um, yeah, I think he was disappointed in that way. But you know, it's uh, it's it was difficult, I think, for Eric as well to to manage a situation like this because it wasn't him who chose Ronaldo. Um, and when you are a new manager, you have to deal with the the existing group of players. Um, and uh, yeah, he decided to 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 put uh, Cristiano more on, uh, on the bench uh, than than the starting role. So that's when uh, everything went sideways. <laughs> I would I would say because Cristiano has never been in that position before in his life, and it's it's hard to accept. Uh, it's hard to realize that at some point in in your career later on, uh, you you're gonna be playing less, and he's not ready for that. So, yeah, good luck for 
good luck to him for the the next chapter and now united is um still in i mean it's it's a long way uh to go for for eric to to uh to rebuild uh united and to give the consistency because they've been playing really well in some games and some games uh you are like what what is this uh this is this is nonsense so yeah consistency will be key because you know the amount of point now in the premier league to win the title just to be in the race with city with liverpool in the past and now it's it's arsenal uh they rarely uh, get a, a defeat so the rhythm is 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 impressive now going back to the to the world cup uh i wanted to get your prediction ahead of sunday who you think will come out on top uh but also i'd like to know who you think will end up uh, finishing the the world cup as uh, as top scorer uh and who for you um you know deserves to be voted player of the tournament as well well uh, um I think we have a France has a slight advantage going into the final because uh, they all the, they are oldest comp, uh, they are the title holder. Uh, they know how to deal with the final, right? The expectation, the pressure, uh, the up and down in uh, in the uh, in the game itself, manage your situations. They have uh, World Cup winners on the field that can speak to the newcomers. I think that's extremely uh, that's a big advantage. And Didier Deschamps uh, won it as a player, as a manager, so he will find the right uh, way to speak to press the buttons uh, any given time. So I think for that reason, uh, and the fact that passion, I don't think is the is a decisive. Uh, uh, Thing for the for whoever's going to win the the final, and I think yeah, Argentina is really passionate, the fans and the players. But I think it can be extremely dangerous going into a final, counting on the passion to be uh to be the the most effective way to to beat your opponent. Uh, but you know they've got that number ten that is not bad, so <laughs> I'm not writing them off. That's for sure. <laughs> Would you say that Messi is uh, is, is player of the tournament, uh, regardless of the the results, or do you think that other players, perhaps an Mbappe, perhaps a Griezmann, uh, have a stronger stronger shout at winning that? No, I think this uh, this should be decided after the after the final because there could be a massive impact, uh, personally or for could be an assist, it could be a, a penalty. So I think they are in the mix. Those three, definitely. And do you, who do you back uh, to finish top scorer, Mbappe or uh, or Messi? Seems like a shootout between the two of them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah it could be, could be Mbappe, could be, uh, could be Messi. I hope Mbappe will will finish top scorer. That means we we should be close from winning the title. Sounds good. Thank you so much for for taking uh, some time out of your busy day to to join us, Mikael. It's been uh, really uh, enriching uh, and insightful to to chat with you about uh, France and uh, enjoy the game on Sunday. And uh, fingers crossed for for Les Bleus. Thank you very much.